video gaming is closing in on nearly six decades of technology with a mixture of ups and downs. Plenty of franchises and titles have set new precedents and have long since become household names, but few have had the success quite like our favorite Italian plumber. So snap those overalls and adjust your mustaches, get ready for a brief history of Mario. In 1979, Nintendo was making arcade cabinets, but their business was in a downhill slide. After the release of Radar Scope proved only moderately successful in Japan, then-president of Nintendo Hiroshi Yamauchi assigned the task of converting the unsold cabinets to video game concept designer Shigeru Miyamoto. Miyamoto created a game based on the love triangle of Popeye, Olive Oil, and Bluto. But lacking the rights to Popeye, the concept was reworked as the story of a carpenter, a gorilla, and a captured girl. This creation would become one of Nintendo's most popular franchises, Donkey Kong, and would serve as the start of what would become Mario. Jumpman, as he was known at the time, was advertised in promotional materials overseas under the name Mario, based on the landlord of Nintendo of America's office and warehouse, Mario Segale. Mario would also reappear in Donkey Kong Jr., and would be the only time in the history of video gaming that Mario was the antagonist, with a whip. 1983 brought us Mario Brothers, where Mario would appear alongside his brother Luigi. Partly due to the design of hat, mustache, and overalls, Miyamoto decided to make Mario a plumber, and what better place for battle than the labyrinth-like sewer system of New York. A man of many talents, Mario would appear in multiple games over the years, including 11 Game & Watch releases between 1982 and 1994. But the Mario that we know today made his groundbreaking side-scrolling appearance in 1985's Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Created by Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka, the supposed swan song of Nintendo put them back on the map with an aim at keeping gameplay somewhat simple. With eight worlds and a soundtrack by Koji Kondo, the future composer of Legend of Zelda, it is no question that this game was a huge success. Super Mario 2 was released in Japan in 1986, but to less than great reviews, and has been considered one of the most difficult Nintendo games ever created. America wouldn't see this game until 1993's Super Mario All-Stars under the subheading The Lost Levels. Instead, the American sequel came in 1988. Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic, aka Dream Factory Heart Pounding Panic, was created in Japan in part by Fuji Television as a promotion for the Tokyo and Osaka-based event Yumi Kojo 87. The game, which originally featured characters based on the mascots of the event, was redeveloped by Nintendo of America, replacing the four main characters with Mario, Luigi, and for the first time in the direct franchise, Toad and Princess Toadstool. This would be the first time that Luigi appeared taller, a design that has stayed constant over the years, as well as the last game where the artwork displayed Mario with a blue shirt and red overalls. In 1989, Nintendo went back to the handheld, this time with an 8-bit system compatible with interchangeable cartridges, the Game Boy. One of the five North American launch titles was Super Mario Land, and it would bring us two more sequels, Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, which would introduce Wario to the world, and thus, the final installment, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. 1990 brought us the North American release of what was regarded as the greatest game of all time, Super Mario 3. Already released in Japan two years prior, it became a quick American success partially thanks to its promotion, an introduction via celluloid in the Tommy-inspired film from Todd Holland, The Wizard, starring Fred Savage and Rilo Kelly's Jenny Lewis. Super Nintendo released the launch title Super Mario World to great reviews, selling 20 million copies worldwide. The game was the introduction of Mario's dinosaur partner Yoshi, a character that Miyamoto had been wanting to create since Super Mario Bros. Being regarded as one of the best games ever made would naturally lead to Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Technically a Mario game still, the plumber took a back seat and saddle as the player navigated Yoshi through nearly 50 levels while trying to protect a baby Mario. 1992 would bring us the first in the series of Mario Kart games, Super Mario Kart. The game would go on to become the third best-selling Super NES title of all time, and go on to spawn many sequels on many different Nintendo platforms, including Mario Kart DS, which would go on to become the best-selling handheld racing game of all time, Mario Kart Wii, which would become worldwide the best-selling game of 2008, and most recently Mario Kart 8, where players could directly upload video highlights to YouTube. 
Another change came in 1996 with the final Mario game for the SNES. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, made in part by Square who would become Square Enix. It featured gameplay influenced by their already popular Final Fantasy series. However, sales weren't great, partly because only four months later Nintendo would launch the Nintendo 64 with the highly regarded Super Mario 64. As of May 2003, 11 million copies had been sold. When the GameCube released in 2001, it bypassed its standard Mario launch title, and instead launched with Luigi's Mansion, which was only the second time Luigi had headed up a game on his own, the first being the 1991 educational and critically panned game Mario is Missing. Of course, Nintendo finally released another Mario title for the GameCube with 2002's Super Mario Sunshine. It became the third best-selling GameCube title of all time, and introduced many recurring characters to the franchise, including Shadow Mario. The Nintendo DS then went classic four years later with the new Super Mario Bros. game. Back to the traditional side-scroller, it sold 30 million copies worldwide, and went on to become its own franchise with a release on the Wii, a sequel on the 3DS, as well as most recently on the Wii U. 2007 saw Nintendo going three-dimensional again, with the Nintendo Wii's Super Mario Galaxy. Hailed as one of the greatest Mario games, it featured many ideas that originated from the tech demo of Super Mario 128, which was to display the abilities and power of Nintendo's gaming consoles, specifically the GameCube. Fans didn't have to wait too long for the sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2 was released in 2010. Super Mario 3D Land came to the Nintendo 3DS in 2011, and combined elements from traditional 2D games and more modern 3D games. Produced by the Mario Galaxy team, Super Mario 3D World, a sequel to 3D Land, dropped in 2013. Though sales were low at first, it showed consistency and even gave Toad a spin-off game, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. One of the biggest titles to be developed was 2015's revolutionary release, Super Mario Maker, which allowed players to create courses based on Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, World, and U. As of May 2016, it was announced that the game had been played over 600 million times, with over 7.2 million courses created worldwide. Nintendo also went mobile for the first time in 2016. Super Mario Run for the iOS and Android was a side-scrolling auto-run game and one of the few instances that Mario was made specifically for non-Nintendo hardware. Within its first week, it had topped 50 million downloads. Even with openings of fairly negative reviews, it still managed to become the fastest growing app in iOS history. And it isn't quite over. It has been announced that in time for the holiday season of 2017, Super Mario Odyssey would be coming to the Nintendo Switch, which based on released footage appears to have Mario leaving his typical world for a more realistic free roaming one. Mario has a very rich gaming history with a diversity in games that include sports games like Mario Tennis, Pinball, Golf, and more, various educational games, more racing games, party games, and puzzle games. Mario has even been known to toss his hat in the fighting ring with the popular series of Super Smash Bros. games. Mario has become a legend, first escaping the video game world in 1983's Saturday Supercade cartoon, as well as the Super Mario Super Show from Deke Animation. And just like the games, again, it kept going. Two more cartoons based on the games, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 as well as Super Mario World, both aired alongside the Captain N cartoons on NBC. He even made a quick jump to the comic book page with Nintendo Comic System from 1990 to 1991, which featured Metroid, Zelda, and more. There were even a series of adventure books from Simon & Schuster, as well as the delightfully tasty Nintendo serial system. But most notable was probably the 1993 live-action box office catastrophe, Super Mario Bros. Distributed by Walt Disney Studios and starring the late Bob Hoskins as the titular character, the movie saw Mario and Luigi, played by John Leguizamo, in a parallel dimension where Dennis Hopper with cornrows as Koopa attempted to merge worlds. Just because Hollywood couldn't make it right, didn't mean the fans had to give up. In more recent years, thanks to Mario fans worldwide, an array of fan-made films have spread across the internet, including Super Mario Underworld, Powered Up, and even our own beatdown boogie production, Mario Warfare. As we approach nearly four decades since Mario first appeared in Donkey Kong, it is somewhat difficult to imagine a world without the man and his mustache. And with Universal Studios Japan groundbreaking on a Super Nintendo World theme park, it looks as if Mario's legacy will continue to grow. 
As Miyamoto once said, I think that inside every adult is the heart of a child. We just gradually convince ourselves that we have to act more like adults. Though that may be true, at least thanks to Shigeru Miyamoto and his Mario Brothers, we can all hold on to our youth a little longer. Like the video? Have suggestions? Comment below and please be sure to subscribe.